Good morning, and welcome to The Breview, the Instagram Live podcast where Kandama news and culture is shared over the warmth of coffee. Today's guest, Brian Skagline, is joining me to talk through his journey from Kandama USA to Chrome Kandamas. As well, we're going to be talking about how we as players can innovate and help contribute to the overall growth of the Kandama community in unique and inspiring ways. I'm really excited to get Brian's opinion on that particularly because Brian has been a huge contributor to the elevation of Kendama, both as a game, as a culture icon, and as just something that brings people together. So I'm incredibly excited to host Brian this morning in a few minutes, but as we get ready to dive into this week's review, as always, I want to know down in the chat, what are you drinking this morning as you come to the review? For me, myself, I am drinking a Costa Rican coffee. Uh, a si the same one that I was making earlier this morning when Chad Covington and Alex Mitchell called me uh, to show me that they were sending a package up for brew battle next weekend. And so I brewed a second cup of that Costa Rican coffee, but I fixed my grind size. There was a whole mess up there. So I'm very, very grateful. Let's see what you guys are drinking down in the chat this morning. Well, we got Epic Palm Tree in here. Welcome here, man. We got Gandhi Lives with his Pure Leaf Lemon Tea Gang. What are you doing? Come on, man. This is a coffee podcast. Bringing tea in here. Well, welcome here regardless. Uh, we got lots of friends in here this morning, and this is going to be an incredible conversation, one that I'm very much looking forward to. And it's kind of exciting. This is episode number 20 of The Breview. It's crazy to me to think that this has been going on for 20 weeks now. Technically 21, because I took one week of a break back when I was moving from Saskatchewan to Alberta. But we've been doing this every single weekend for 18 weeks straight, and... I'm not ready to stop anytime soon. This has been so fun for me, and I am genuinely excited every single Saturday to sit down with a good cup of coffee and with a good conversation to talk through what is going on in the Kendama world, both on a news, culture, and innovation side. We've had some really incredible conversations in the past, and I'm looking forward to what's coming up soon. I see that Brian Skagline is in the chat, so we're going to get him in here in just a moment. But as we get ready to dive into this week's review, I want to remind you guys a couple things. One, uh, this upcoming weekend is a crazy weekend for me. We are hosting Calgary's first full-scale competition called Brew Battle 2020. This is a competition that ranges from beginner to pro level, and we have freestyle events included as well. And I have been so humbled and overwhelmed by the amount of support that has been shown to Brew Battle by companies just saying, hey, we want to send some product to help support the event. So thank you to all the companies that are sponsoring the event next weekend. I am incredibly grateful. Uh, on top of that, though, I also want to let you know that there are two ways to contribute in every single episode that we do of the Brewview. Uh, the best way to contribute is A, by dropping in a little uh, comment down in the chat saying hello, let me know what you're drinking this morning, and contributing with everybody else and just engaging in the conversation with us. This is meant to be a live convo. But secondly, the second best way and a way to contribute to the actual episode's development is by submitting a question. You can do that ahead of time in my stories when I drop the question and answer poll, uh, but you can also do that by dropping a question into the little rectangle at the bottom that has the question mark, and we have dedicated some time in today's episode to ask Brian your questions. It's more fun when we get to bring more people into the conversation. So all that said, we are going to dive into this week's episode of The Review, titled uh, From Skags to Riches, Inside an inside look into the mind of Kendama's hype beast, or something like that. I can't remember what I actually titled it, but I thought it was a clever name, and I'm really excited to have Brian on. So let me just add him in here right away, and we will this week's review. If you could join me in welcoming Brian Skagline to the review. Woo! What's up, Dude. everybody? Cheers. Oh my goodness, Thank Brian. You, How are you? Doing well. Uh, super funny, actually. I just sat down at my desk right now. And um, I tuned into the live, and then all of a sudden you were—you said something about like the coffee. Make sure you have it. Tune in. And I looked around at my desk, and I was like, "Where's my coffee?" I was, like, <laughs> oh, no. Abby, and I was like, "Abby, where's my coffee?" And she was like, "I don't know. Is it downstairs?" And she took off downstairs, grabbed my coffee, and came running back like this, and it's spilling everywhere. So hey, but uh, you have your coffee, girlfriend. Yes, we have my <laughs> coffee. It came in hot. It's perfect now. She oh. made, uh, we have a ninja coffee blender or coffee pot thing, and. Uh, she made this like cool latte thing this morning that spilled all over the house and it's delicious and I love it. Oh my goodness. Well, let's, so let's, oh yeah. Cheers. Cheers to the coffee gang down in the chat. <laughs> cheers to you, Brian. Thank you for joining the review. I'm really excited for this conversation. We're going to talk about some real stuff, the transition from, from Kusa to Chrome, as well as 
I, a conversation that I think I'm actually more interested in is your perspective on where Kendama is going and how we as players and people in the community can help contribute to the innovative growth of Kendama outside of just okay. lacing bangers. And, and I kind of wanted to, to use this podcast almost as a, as a sort of follow-up episode to your, your episode on Dominards because I thought that episode, first off, was amazing. Those Thank of you, you down in the chat need to go listen to the episode of Brian Skegline on the Dominards with with MJ and with Rod, because it's a really good episode, but it leaves us kind of on a cliffhanger because that episode landed when you had left Kusa, but before you had started with Chrome. And so now we're in this whole new world of Skagline where we, we don't know what's happening. And so I'm excited to host some of that combo today. Yeah, now, all that said though, uh, I always like to start off each episode with three questions. My first okay. question being, what are you drinking this morning? And you've already kind of answered that, but yeah. so I'll ask the secondary question. How do you like to drink your coffee? Mm, like, like hot, cold, just like normal. Whatever. Coffee. What's your favorite way to drink coffee? Oh, so it, I was raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and at a young age, for some reason, next to our sink, my parents had this like, like this spigot, and we had like a normal one, obviously, but the next to it was a smaller one, and it was just scalding hot water at all times. It was like a button you press and it was scalding hot water. So since like, I want to say like end of middle school-ish, whenever I started like drinking coffee and like- Oh, you uh, were an early bloomer, middle yeah. school. I got into like emo music and just like one of my <laughs> friends at the time and skateboarding. So I was like coffee, tight clothes. Yeah, I can get, I can get with this. But uh, okay. I, I was raised on like instant coffee, like my entire life. My brother now like makes fun of it so bad, like roasts my parents all the time. But I would just like, and still to this day, I make coffee like that at my parents' house, just instant coffee, scalding hot water, throw some like French vanilla cream in there or something, and I'm good. At home now, uh, for my girlfriend's birthday this year, I got her like, yeah, one of those like ninja, like super nice, like uh, yeah. coffee pots. So we use that now. So we drink some pretty bougie coffee every morning. What brand, what's that brand we like, the yellow one? Uh, Cafe Bostello. Cafe Bostello. Comes okay. Out sometimes, it's pretty good. Okay, right on. <laughs> um, but... Lastly, yeah, so it's a three-parter for coffee. So okay, my parents' okay. house, I drink instant. My house, I drink a regular coffee pot, Ninja. Um, what's it called again? Cafe Bustello. And then Cafe also, uh, shout out. I've been working at the Apple store. I've been working for Apple for, like, almost 10 years. And so I work at, like, the mall in, like, the South Hills of, like, Pittsburgh. And every single day, I get a tall iced coffee with a shot of espresso from Starbucks. Nice. Classic. Go, you, you always got to get those, um, those pre pre work coffees. I remember, so I, I didn't start really drinking coffee until after I had graduated high school and the year before oh, I went wow. to college. So in that wow. gap year is kind of when I really started getting into it. But my gateway to like super caffeinated drinks was those Starbucks refreshers. Have you had those? So those things are apparently like super caffeinated because they're actually oh, like yeah. the extract of the caffeine in those to, to create such a caffeinated drink. Yeah, I don't awesome know if that's like awesome. super true or the details behind it. I don't really drink Starbucks too often anymore, but those things were so refreshing. And I would like drink one of those before I went to go work as a sales associate at a future shop. And I was just like always happy when I was at work because it's caffeine and I had no idea what it was doing to me. And oh, look yeah. at me now. <laughs> yeah, as you said, like, you're plugged like earlier too. It was like stay caffeinated. I was like, he's in it. Out of it. <laughs> he's so in it. Yeah. Okay. Second question uh, in in our little icebreakers here. I want to know from you what your favorite all time trick is, and it doesn't have to be one you've done. It could be one that you just like really admire, or one that you're chasing, but or it could be one you've done. What is your favorite all time trick? I feel like it's almost gonna be like anticlimactic, but like. It's just like, it's one of those things, like, as soon as I pick up a Kendama, it's like one of the first things I kind of just like bust out, but like, it's super, uh, Orange Jody Barton mod plug from. Yeah. <laughs> it's super like, uh, I don't know if like, like, there's no suspense, but it's like, big, uh, Sarah Grip, big cup, tray flip, big cup, and then just Sarah Grip spike. It's like probably one of yeah. my good, as soon as I pick up a Kendama, I do it. Um, also a big fan of like turntables, but I guess, yeah, my favorite trick ever is probably uh, pizza. It's like when you hold air. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spins around your finger and just do a swap swing. Yeah. Oh, I it's love a, that trick. It's a full party trick. It's fun. Like, I feel it's one of those things, like, if you know what Kendama is or if you're, like, new to Kendama, it's just one of those things that, like, looks impressive. And it's just like, oh, that was cool. And it, it can impress someone who knows what Kendama is, doesn't know, like. Yeah, so it's a good happy medium trick. Me Absolutely. Happy. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, third, third question before we dive into the real meat of our conversation. Yes. Uh, third and final, and this one's always my favorite question, I think, of every episode. 
Who is the most inspiring Kendama player or influence in your life? Well, I feel like most people who know me would say, like, it's really hard to narrow it down to, like, one person, but, like, mm, uh, dang. I'll have to say Colin Sanders is probably my biggest inspiration. He's the one that, like, offered me a spot for Kendama USA early on, like, but also, it's such a close runner-up for different reasons, too. Like, Sander, I would say, for sure, it would be, like, the, the pillar of it. But then also, like, closely with the pillar is, like, Zach Yord and also mm. Lee Jenkins. I would say those three are just, like... Like the, the yeah. classic Kusa squad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those, those guys, them, they're probably like, definitely the best, I would say. Sander, because he got me into it. But also, like, I grew up with, like, Yord, kind of. Like, we lived, like, like a couple of minutes apart. And... I saw him play with it first and I was like, that's really cool. But I was in like my intense, like emo scene, like in a like small touring band and was like, I can do one thing at a time. That's super rad, but I'm doing music right now, but that's rad. Mm -hmm. And then like Sander was the one, like once I kind of got out of music, like our band broke up, like we'll start talking about it later. And then like, uh, just started playing Kendama Heavy and that's when I hit up like Zach and Colin, like the pro models came out like for the first time, like the premiere line. And I was like, this is sick. I, I'm good at these things. I want to be a part of this mm -hmm. thing that you guys are doing. Like, but long yeah. answer, Sander, I would say would probably be like the biggest influence and like mentee, awesome. mentee, like kind of thing, I would say. Cool. Okay. Well, we're going to dive into the meat of our conversation here. Uh, we're going to start on a conversation of the, the Kusa to Chrome transition, and then we'll, we'll jump into the innovation side of, of how we as players can jump into the con contribution of the growth of Kendama a little bit later. And we've set aside some time for some live Q&A. So I want to remind those of you in the chat that you can participate in this episode by asking Brian a question. Okay. The best way to do that is to put it in the question box down at the bottom. That's that rectangle with the question mark. There's a few in there already. It always gets filled up throughout the episode. So make sure you get them in there sooner than later if you want your question asked. All that said, Brian, are you ready to dive into your review? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. Let's play it. Awesome. Okay, so again, I want to preface, like a lot of your story, especially with Kusa and your journey to Kusa has already been told in the Dominards episode. And so I don't want to rehash what's already been said too much. Sure. Uh, and I want to recommend that those of you that are tuning in to go listen to that episode if you want more of that story. Yeah. But basically to sum up that story, you had accelerated into the Kendama scene in a really unique way, right? You didn't start out as like, you, you're, you're in, your ambition was to contribute something different. And you had gotten into the media side of things, which got you that position at Kusa, which had scaled your growth that way. And you had kind of grown Kendama less so as like a trick progression, but as a showmanship sport, like a, a, a sport that we can actually showcase as attractive more than just the tricks. Yeah. And then most recently, you've actually left Kusa now and you're now with Chrome. And so I want to dive into that story a little bit more. And you've talked a little bit about the reasoning for leaving Kusa. But I actually want to ask the question is what was it like for you to not be sponsored after leaving Kusa, that gap period between Kusa and Chrome? What was that purgatory like? It was, uh, it was odd because like obviously with Kendama USA, like it has been like, I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for Kendama USA. And that's a fact. And I'll always appreciate everything that Kendama USA and like it has done for me and Jero and like Alyssa and Shreve. Everybody works hard at Kendama USA. Like I love all of them endlessly. Um, and then like having that conversation where I was like, you know, I think I'm going to leave. And then it was, it was, it was hard. It was like, are you going to leave like the company and the team? Would you want to stay on the team and like, rep still but leave the company maybe and i was just like i think that i have to just like bandit approach it and just do all of it like i think at the time like it was like six or seven like amazing years with konami usa but again like aside from like you know covid kind of like turning the world upside down and everything and just like we still see each other like mm -hmm. I was sponsored by Kendama USA, but I was still friends with like Cooper and Max and like Fraser. Mm -hmm. Like we're all the same. Yeah, like, everybody's so tight. Same. Like yeah, this is the first time you and I are actually talking. Like we're friends. All like that's it. Like that's I, how it goes. That's how it happens. Um, but it was hard. Like the waiting period, the, the period between like Kendama USA and like getting sponsored again was odd because like I truthfully did not have any other sponsor in mind. I was not trying to like leave Kendama USA and then go to like, another company like that. Wholeheartedly was not my intention. It was more or less just like. I moved home, like, I recently had just turned, like, 30, like, last, like, in September, and uh, I was just ready, I was, like, I'm working for Apple for so long, I just want to make these, like, moves, but I'm still going to be playing Kendama. Then COVID hit, 
we're all locked inside. I'm playing Kendama more than I literally ever have in such a short period of time, like ever. So I'm just like putting out content and doing this. Yeah. Just, like, I still enjoy this so much. I knew it wasn't going to play. Like I wasn't leaving Kendama. I was just like leaving Kendama USA sponsorship team at the time. So like, it was kind of odd. It was kind of, it was almost like being in a long relationship and then breaking up. And then mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I'm just gonna like be single, be a free yeah, agent for okay. a while. That's my thing. <laughs> And it was actually really nice because like I got a few sponsors. I guess I got a few just like uh, prop boxes. I just got a few boxes from like Soul and like everybody over at like Sweets and um, Chrome hooked it up. So it was it was flattering. It was odd. It was kind of just like because every package that showed up, it had like Yo Skags, you're the man. Just here's this thing. Play with them. <laughs> go for it. Let it. Let us know what you think. think. <laughs> yeah, I was just like. Like, here's, here's some of our stuff. Like, just put it out there. So it was cool. It was flattering. But again, like, I, I'm fortunate enough to know everybody like, in, like, mm -hmm. the Kendama industry and the scene and stuff. Just, like, so I more or less would text chat afterwards. I was like, yo, a cushion Linden mod? Like, why did you – this is amazing. Thank you so much. And, like, so it was really flattering. It was cool. It made me feel like I made the right decision. Like, the whole community kind of backed mm -hmm. it. Like, there was no – and is no bad blood between, like, myself or anybody with, like, Kendama USA. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we went, to, I went to Atlanta, like I said, in September and celebrated with like the Grande crew, like my boys, like Chewbacca, Christian Frazier, Lyndon Whalen, and like we had people who worked at Konami USA come over and hang out. So it was cool. It was a really good time. And it, But like either way, the period between leaving Konami USA and getting sponsored again, like that was, it was cool. It was refreshing. It was nice because I took pride in just like not going like dead air on everybody. I took pride mm -hmm. in just like I left. But then, like, a week and a half later, I posted a trick. And then I posted another trick. And then yeah. I just kept going. So that was, like, it felt good. I was, like, proving a point that, like, I'm not leaving. I'm just, like, leaving this thing right now. But, like, I'm still in the trenches with everybody. We're still doing this. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I want to know, you did you posted a few pieces of content in between going to, to Chrome, where you had just been playing with other companies' shapes. I remember your What's Poppin' edit. Uh, yeah. Jack Harlow reppin, uh, playing with, I can't even remember exactly what, what mod it was. It was... It was, it was a, a switch cushion, mod. It was a cushion sweep mod, yeah. Yeah, was, one of their... Super fire. Yeah, that was a fun edit, first off. Thank it was you. like, whoa, this is a whole flavorful side of Skeggs. I, I don't know if I had personally seen up until that point where I was like, he just like looks like he's freaking loving Kendama right now and just yeah. enjoying playing the game. Did you find that you had a, a renewed sense of passion for Kendama in that rest period? Yeah, yeah. It, yes, just because like, it was cool that, like, I was playing different brands of Kendamas, but also, like, with Kendama USA, like, I would get obsessed with something, and I would completely just, like, zero everything else out and be obsessed with it. I would, I would almost want to be, like, that thing. Like, if someone saw me, they would think, like, this is Kendama, this is Kendama USA, this is, like, all, I would be the representation of that thing for them. Like, to give an example of the Apple Store, it's, like, if you walk into the Apple Store, the first person you see with an Apple shirt, that's your experience of Apple as a right. whole with that one person. So, with me, like, So, you I, wanted to be the gateway. To I Kusa, wanted, right? I the representation of that, yeah. and it's like not being sponsored was kind of it was, it was cool because like I not that there was any type of like guidelines or like criteria for Kendama USA because I think one thing that's cool about Kendama USA is you can be anybody and you can be like play with them like sponsored mm -hmm. like like Flow or Tech or like World Champ like it's it, it's so diverse and just like, yeah Kendama was so cool for that like reason but like it was nice being able to play different shapes. Playing different shapes absolutely allowed me to like unlock new play styles and new tricks. Mm -hmm. Like I never thought I would land like trip tap to inward lunar ever. But then like playing with like one of the sweets mods, I did. Then once I started playing some of the Chrome Slay Dogs, I was like, oh my god, I've never done a quad inward lunar flip before. Like this is a, this is so cool. Mm -hmm. But like it was cool because like again, there wasn't a criteria, but it was just like I could totally be myself. I could play with whatever I want, wherever I want, whatever music I want to listen to. Like. I do take pride in, like, having some of my stuff, like, somewhat clean for the most part. But, like, I'm not going to go through and, like, censor every song because, like, mm -hmm. anything that's offense, I just wouldn't use, in my opinion, I just wouldn't use to begin with. But, like, again, it just overall, I think it allowed me to just, like, yeah, play new shapes, listen to music I want, do my own thing. Like, mm -hmm. it, it felt like it kind of, like, V2, like, Brian, yeah, like, whatever. <laughs> right. So, so then in that transition period, at some point, you were like, all right there's potentially something happening here with Chrome. Talk to me a little bit about that story of how Chrome came to be your newest sponsor and what that journey was actually like. Um, I was thinking about this this morning and I was thinking about how much I actually want to share. 
Uh, and I, I'm cool mm -hmm. with just talking about literally everything. So am I cutting out or am I cool? Uh, a little leggy, but I can still hear you fine. So it's okay. The video content, it'll, it'll render itself afterwards. Perfect. Um, but yeah, so originally like I got, I got packages from people and I was playing in like the middle of the year and I was kind of just like, you know, maybe, maybe I could get sponsored again. Like maybe that would be an option for me or something like that. Um, and I just like started playing, making videos, like didn't have any ties. And for a little bit there, I was really talking to like Sweets Kandamas about potentially working with them and like helping with some of their social media. And like I was talking to Frazier a lot and like really entertained that idea. And like for, for a little while, I was pretty prepared to go to like Sweets Kandamas. But at the same time, I just, I really, really cared about what the community thought for like it's such a specific reason. Mm. I was just like, I don't want to, I don't want this to like look bad. Or look like sometimes like cheesy, like tacky, just like, oh, Brian wants to leave this, now wants to go to this company. And like everything he said was like just not valid and fake. Like that mm -hmm, wasn't the mm -hmm. case at all. It's just like people change, situations change. Like, yeah, things change. change. So it's like, I, and truthfully, I thought about it. I was like, you know what? Whatever. Like, I'm going to do whatever I want and keep doing that and bring that same energy to whatever thing I go to. So, like, let's do it. Um, but then at that same time, like, Jake Fisher was, uh, hitting me up a lot and a lot and a lot and Jake Fisher Fishy. Was like, you know, like we would love like for you to work with like social we would think it'd be really cool on the team and blah 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 and like basically kept talking about it so I kind of just like basically weighed the options and I made like a pros and cons just like thing with myself and I was like here's things that I could be doing and not, not none of it had to do with like money none of it had to do with just like how it looked for me if I did this like it was purely mm -hmm. just like what's gonna make me the happiest and after zooming all the way out and kind of just like fast forwarding through it and like conversations and stuff I really thought about it and like at the beginning like coolest looking stuff European vibe to it has just like that cool like new like fresh like cutting edge kind of feel and, and I, I and the designs are always cool and the videos are always hype and I don't know I felt like with them I could really just like help make it grow and like bang and like be good and be better and that kind of stuff. And I don't know, like with Sweet Kingdom is too, like they're absolutely killing it. Like yeah. they're verified, they're like 107,000 followers. Like their social media is off the chain, like the target deal and stuff. Like Sweet is holding it down so hard that like the totally. conversation, the conversation with Christian Frazier was actually really hard because him and I are like really close and we're really good friends. And like uh, telling him, he was just like, he was like, you know, I think it'd be awesome for Sweets. And I was like, you know what, Christian, like I appreciate that so much. And I love the guys at Sweets. Like, Anytime we go to events, like, I'd almost want to hang out with the sweets guys, like, more than, like, you know, I'm USA. It's certain, like, just like, it's just like the right friends and that kind of stuff. Like, I love Yeah, that. it's just the people that you're close with. It doesn't, yeah, absolutely. And so, I think you mentioned that even in, in your podcast episode with Dominators. Like, there, there was a handful of people you were quite close with on Kusa, but, but yeah. not everybody. And then you had friends. I, I mean, but that's Kendama, too, right? You just get to know everybody. We're yeah, all in this. this thing. It's all of our internet friends at an event. <laughs> we're here for, like, two days, three days, and it's like, oh my gosh, Rod, Adele, oh, what's up, like, everyone's yeah. there, you're like, oh my gosh, like, so it's, it gets like, crazy and hectic and stuff like that, but at the same time, like, I told, like, I told, like, Fresh, and, like, the sweets and stuff, I was like, love you guys so much, like, honestly, like, I appreciate everything, um, but I think just, like, yeah, with, like, they, they're killing it, everything was held down, so I was like, they're gonna be destroying it for, like, years and years and years to come, so, like, and with Chrome, I feel like, if I may speak candidly, Chrome always had like hammers on their team. They had like the best players. They had just like the cool vibe aesthetic, but no one was there to film anything. And nobody was taking like every night. Like obviously they had like good coverage, but like I knew that with my capability, with my media, with my, my just like, like just feel for things I could make it like pop like really well. Right. And playing the sleigh dog shapes and just kind of talking to them was, was, was like coming down the line and whatnot. I, it just made more sense. Like I'm a little bit older and I just like the look of everything. And just like, we started talking way more. And I started talking to like TK and Rolf and everything. And I just kind of made the decision. I was like, Chrome, I think is going to be the way. And really it became just like, it, it, it's because of like all of them on the team being so talented. And I, me just knowing that if I had my skill and talent, just like media coverage, like it's going to be so much fun. It's going to benefit Chrome. It's going to benefit me. Like, just the development too. Like I love how like Chrome is pumping out like products and ideas and designs. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. TK will call me sometimes and just be like, yo Skags, I listened to this podcast and he was a guy from PayPal. He was talking about how we shouldn't do this and, and just like, give me like eight minutes of like, just 
almost want to just be like, I'm excited about this thing. I need to tell somebody about it. Uh, okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. And it's like not even Kendama related, but it is. And it's just like, I like that energy and I just like that like feel to it. So overall, like it was a hard decision, but at the same time, like I'm really, really happy with the decision I made with like Chrome. I'm very lucky to even mm -hmm. have a, have to make a decision for that kind of thing. Like I just, I'm, it's yeah, it's it's a cool feeling. It's fun. And I'm excited just for what's going to be happening in the future with it. Cool. Well, I'll ask one more question here in this part of the segment. We'll jump into some live Q&A here from the chat here in a second. Then we'll, we'll dive in a little bit more deeply into innovation in Kanama. Um, so what is your current role with Chrome? And where do you see the future of Chrome going in the next maybe two years to keep the time frame a little tight? Yeah. Uh, pretty much with Chrome, it's like... Uh, like we just like Chrome just wants to be like the best of the best and just like basically focus on like Chrome and like just honestly just pushing it as hard as it can go with Chrome. Like my actual title is Chromey. So I'm on the team, which is something I definitely wanted. It wasn't even like a question. It was like, I want to be on the team, but I also would like to work for Chrome at the same time. And they were just like, yeah, for sure. So Chromey spot. Uh, so I rep the product obviously. And then when, when and if we're able to travel in the future, I'll just be like playing Chrome and whatnot, obviously. And then um, I'm also employed by Chrome. So I cover all of their media, pretty much like Instagram, Facebook, all like the social media platforms and stuff, just because like, I'm interested in that kind of stuff. Like I like, I I've always been interested in like the stats, like information, like what makes somebody click? Why did someone not swipe up? Like this trick was crazy impressive but it didn't get as much content. It didn't get as much engagement as like this photo. Right, really getting into the topic. analytics like, of what, yeah, yeah. what catches the also, eye. It also has something to do with like, I have a, I, I went to college, uh, Penn State University, we are, represent, and I have a degree in psychology. And like, I think that like, honestly, that all ties in with like, I just like, like talking to people, learning about people. Yeah, why do people do what media. they do? Yeah, why just do people media, click like, like, yeah. Yeah, it's like, like, what are you into? I like these things. And it's like, and just how it spreads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like really cool. Some of the best marketers are psychologists because they're, they really understand why people do what they do and why they like what they like and those sorts of things. Yeah. So for, for a social media guy, having a, a background in psychology is really helpful. Okay. Um, I, I, I could have a hundred more questions about Chrome and your current role there, but let's dive into some of our fans questions here. Some of the yeah. questions in the chat. Uh, there were a couple that were submitted ahead of time. So I'm going to give a couple of these priority before we dive into what's in the chat. So Jubaka 90 asked, and I, I don't know if there's an inside joke here or something, but he asked, is Probably. there a best chicken wing flavor? Um, shout out Bash. It is the best though. <laughs> it's the best ever. I think the best, I think the best flavor for a wing is lemon pepper. I think it's the best. Okay. It's a dry rub. It's a little like zesty. Yeah, so not, not, a, not a wet rub. Zesty, I, yeah. You don't like wet wings. I do, but it gets messy, and I just sure. like I'm, I'm a little bit bougie when it comes to wings. Okay, uh, boneless, or, boneless or bone in? It's a mood thing, but I'll, you, I would usually go uh, bone. Okay, bone. I'm I'm a big fan of either buffalo with like a blue cheese dip or a honey sriracha. Honey yeah, sriracha see, is so good. See, Jubaka's opening a can of worms with this one. So <laughs> okay, all day. well, yeah, well, yeah. another podcast, another day. We can talk Lime wings. Um, Kendama Dines asked, "Is." is there going to be a Skaggs mod in the future? Is that something? And I know you talked a little bit about the, the dream to have your own mod uh, on Dominards, but is that something we, we might be expecting to see from Chrome? I think that anytime somebody plays Kendama and like understands the community and just sees the capability with it, everyone's dream is to go pro playing Kendama. And like, I think that we still have like some work to do with like current people and like, just, you have to be able to like step aside also and recognize like the talent. I think you have to be able to recognize when your talent is kind of like not peaking as much as it was anymore. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. If we, we'll see, hopefully and we'll see, maybe. Cool, okay, uh, a couple questions here from the, the chat that were submitted. Baked BMX Co asked, what was your very first Kendama and what was your very first Bang Your Lace? Actually, I remember from the Dominards episode what your first Kendama was, is what? a blue TK-16, correct? Yep, fact. Yes. That's perfect, yeah. My first Kendama ever was a blue TK-16. I ordered it from kendamausa.com because I was like skiing with my friends in the mountains in uh, Pennsylvania and we were at my friend's cabin and I was on the grill and my back was turned. I literally heard like click, clack, click, clack, like same story as everybody. And yeah. I turned around and it was my friend Dylan, my other friend, Zach Yord. They, they were like playing with it. And I was like, what is that? And they kind of explained it to me really quickly. And I was like, oh, that's pretty crazy. And kind of went back to my thing. And yeah, but Blue TK16, 
And my first banger, I don't know. I mean, like, hitting a Lunar, obviously, like, way back when mm. was, like, insane. Like, years ago, you had to be playing Kendama for, like, months and months to be able to hit a Lunar flip, or hit a Lunar in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say, like, my my first, like, banger or first trick where I was just, like, you did it, landed it, and you're like, oh, and you're out in your kitchen, and you're like, Mom, uh, cook somebody. I have to show somebody this trick. Uh, it was, uh, I would do spike, and then I would do base cuff, and then I would do base cuff flip, back to base and then spike yeah and that made me so happy for some reason. that and honestly the tray flip big cup uh thing again i don't know yeah those are my first bangs cool um i saw jay queens drop one in the chat real quick one gopro versus dslr which one would you choose if you could only choose one gopro i'm Go. honestly about to choose iphone over any camera there is period i think the pov is the best type of way to film kendama because it's engaging you can see what the person is doing you can see the product perfectly like obviously it's difficult with like framing and stuff like that but um with newer models it's getting better i just think it's portable it's practical pov is engaging it makes people stop and look um and again like dslr like props to the people that still do that kind of stuff but like it's a lot I'm of effort for it i'm very like point shoot click edit yeah. like i i do it because i love it but i do it for different like uh, you know what gopro Wings, yeah. GoPro. GoPro from the Wings. Okay, uh, there was a question here from Alyssa. Uh, what's your favorite Linkin Park song? <sighs> Alyssa. Yeah, hey. we'll, we'll try and keep these quick. When we got so Sorry, many. Uh, faint, faint off Meteora. Faint. Okay, uh, let's get two more here and then let's jump into the second half of our conversation. Okay, Carter Justice asked, favorite Cardi leak? Also, those of you that don't know this, Brian's a huge music guy. So these are where some of these questions are coming from. Favorite Cardi? I don't, none. Next question. Cardi. <laughs> okay, we'll skip that one. Uh, a couple more quick ones, a little bit more personal. What instrument did slash do you play? What was the name of your sick emo band? My sick emo band was called Eyes Have Seen the Glory. Check it out on Apple Music, Spotify, everything. The front cover has like a dude like this on it with like vomit going down his shirt. It's like black and white. Um, Eyes Have Seen the Glory. I played the bass for the band. I loved it. And I played the guitar growing up. And I can also play the violin. Fun fact. But only cool. Christmas carols. Only Christmas carols. All right, last question, and then we'll save the rest for at the end of the episode. Uh, Lindsay asked, what female and male Kendama players have inspired you and why? Maybe maybe one of each. Yeah. Uh, female, I would say some, Haley Bischoff, I think, is like one of the most inspirational mm. female Kendama players. She was one of like the first ones to like really go out there and just like send mm -hmm. like dudes and everybody else. And just like her personality and just like Honestly, like spirit too. Like Bish is one of the coolest for sure. Um, so female, I would say Haley Bischoff, and then for male, I would say Zach York, just because like again, he was one of the ones that showed to me first, and it was just like Zach's whole aesthetic and like Zach's whole outlook about it was really cool. It was just like, of course, when you're filming a trick, like you get into it, you're like gonna stress out over stuff, but like Zach mm -hmm. would always keep it chill, keep it calm. He's like, it's gonna happen. Practice it. It's gonna happen. And I think that that it really has helped me like progress and like you can even see it when he films stuff like when zach films stuff and i almost look like a perfect like perfectly executed like it's yeah. just yeah bish and yord the goats nice sure. shout out to, to Haley bischoff in the chat i think yord was in here too i'm not sure uh and shout out to bish if you want to listen to an episode of the review where we we chat with bish about coffee we talk about the desert wave hey. and herb growth uh, go check that out as well. Um, okay, let's dive into the second half of our conversation here today. I love the specs as well. I should pick up a pair of those. Do they, do they help you see? <laughs> Haley sent me those so I could put them on my cat. Oh, sick. Haley, look too. Beep. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. For those of you that are tuning in in the podcast afterwards, it's a miniature kendama, a very small one. Okay. <laughs> Um, all right, let's jump into the second half of our conversation. In your episode of The Dominards, you also talked about the direction that Kendama was going in, specifically highlighting some of the, the developments that like Chrome and Kusa and maybe companies like Seoul have done in creating partnerships outside of the Kendama community to help grow the Kendama community, especially highlighting like the Boogie T mod, Subtronics, Disciple, Boo Johnson, these characters that have kind of like snuck into the Kendama community from the outside and now are huge components to growing it. What do you think about that? And, and where do you see the direction of, of this venture going? I think that this year is such a pivotal, like just because again, like the world is so upside down, like was, is like, 
and I think that right this year was the year for people to like hunker down and just like kind of decide like focus on media focus on the tricks focus on like yourself and what you're doing with Kendama because like like I've said in the past like me me landing tricks obviously is fun and I love doing mm -hmm. it and that's why we're even having this conversation right now is because we love playing Kendama. we love Kendama yeah but aside from that, like, right now is a time where media is literally controlling Kendama. Like, how are all of us talking to each other right now? Instagram, yeah. Facebook, social media. How are we all competing right now? Social media. How are we all, like, how are we buying products? How are we, like, even watching? It's, it's all media. It's, like, being able to record, take photos, edit, cut, whatever you have to do. Like, this is, this is, people need to be able to, like, if you want to play Kendama and it's going to be, like, a fun thing you do, like, that's fine. Go for it. But also, if you want to take it further and, like, make something great of it, like, really put the time in. Like, I knew at a young age, like, growing up skateboarding, like, I was good at skateboarding with my friends and what. But, like, I, we would go out and, like, film and that kind of stuff. And I was a filmer. Like, me landing a banger or, like, me kick flipping a big stair set was, like, I got the, I got the feeling, instead of landing it, I got the feeling of, like, getting the clip and, like, yeah. it, putting a video and just, like, having all your friends over afterwards and showing them. It's, like this is the video that we made. It's just like such a good way to like bring it back to life and like think about like what you've done and like how good I'm rambling pretty much. But at the same time, like I think that it's important to like be a photographer with Kendama or like be someone that's going to go out there and be like, yo, everyone check this out or be someone that's going to like edit or just like find that, like find that like niche of what you want about it and just mm -hmm. like, just really polish it. Like, it blows my mind how bad Kendama players are at filming themselves. And that's no offense. <laughs> I am to, the like, worst. Anybody, nobody directly, but like, it's crazy. Like, yeah, we, we lean up our phone against something. We turn it on selfie mode. We If you don't film frame a Kendama it. trick in front of a bunch of trees, I'm not watching it. I can't see what you're doing. I can't even see what's happening. Like, we're friends, so like, I'll give you a double tap or something. But at the same time, like, I want to give you a like if that means like, yes, you did a good job. Here's my vote for your good job. Yeah. But also, Lyndon Whalen, if you're gonna put your camera in your driveway and film in front of trees one more time, I'm gonna lose it. Gonna <laughs> Shout lose out to Lyndon. <laughs> Just like when I'm filming POV, D Westy wouldn't care that I say this, but D Westy would film in his backyard and he'd film like next to a trash can or like an empty bucket or a hose and like dead grass. I'm just like, I'm the viewer. I don't want to look at any of this right now. I can't even focus on the trick because of just like how distracting the background is. I would tell Josh Kim, take this new Kendama, take your GoPro and go to an empty parking lot with black asphalt or something and just film as many tricks as you can. Send me all the video footage. We'll make a video. And that video is called, uh, I think it's called like POV, Perp with the POV or something on Kendama USA. And it's like an amazing video. But any, again, like long-winded answer, you touched the nerve with this one. But like, I think that people need to like, Really think about like Kendama and think about what is going to progress Kendama. You can go out and land tricks. That's awesome. I like landing tricks, but also doing it in a way where someone on the internet is going to see it and be like, damn, that was really cool. What is that called? I like that color. Oh, there's more of them. Oh, wow. And you kind of mm -hmm. cast that net with what you're doing. So it's like when I go out to film, like, yes, I have a trick in mind, but I also have a spot in mind. I also have like how I want it to land. Like if I want to, if I want my trick to like flow through, I want it to flow through. If I kind of make it like messy, I do it again because I want it to look perfect. I want it to be that representation. I want right. someone to see one of my clips and have the first impression I did. Like when I saw like Jordan Colin and Ween's tricks, they're like, I've said it before on the podcast that when Turner Thorne in Japan landed the border balance, border balance clip, that literally changed the course of my life. I saw that trick go down and I was just like, I love that so much. I need to be a part of that somehow. And that's mm -hmm. when I started like just, just buzzing, like Colin and Zach and everyone. And I eventually met Jero and I was just like, I'm good at Kendama. These guys are way better and she gets sponsored before me. However, I'm good with the computer and I'm good with the camera. And this is what I can offer. And I think that was just like spirit energy and stuff. They just like liked it. And that's fortunately yeah. what stopped me like as far as that. Yeah, man, you were like, every... I answered what you asked me originally. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll poke in a little bit more. But but you were like everyone's want to be best friend, right? Everybody wants the filmer to be their best friend. Who's like, dude, I want to come film a trick with you. I wish I had people like that that are like, yo, I'm a, let's go film a trick. I'm gonna I'm gonna capture it. I'm gonna make it and it's gonna look amazing so that people love it. It's like, otherwise, I was like, yeah, I'll just go on my back patio try and film for a little bit, put them on my story. I haven't filmed like anything in forever. 
but man, it, yeah, like everything that you do content wise, you're always focused not on the trick itself, but on the experience of the viewer watching it, yeah. that that experience translates into something, whether or not that be a social share, whether or not that be likes, whether or not that be comments, a way to engage people at a deeper level to bring them in, because that's what's going to grow, right? It's like it, because yes, like, it is, and it's almost it goes into like, I'm just gonna go like meta for a second. It's yeah, yeah. Almost also when Imagine when you're playing Kendama with your friends and you're on public somewhere, like standing out in front of the mall or you're at a park or whatever. And then a, a, a person or a family or someone just stops and they're just like, what is that? And someone's like, oh, it's a Kendama. And they pull up quad tap and mess up. And it's like, oh, it's this up. And they just find all these bangers. And it's like, dude, they don't even know what this is. Like, go like this and show them what, so they can at least understand and have it register what's happening. Like, mm -hmm. I think the first impression there, I've seen so many people do that on trips and it drives me nuts. It's like, and then they'll just be like, I'm a professional and I do this. And I'm like, they don't even know what that's called. And you told them you're a professional. I would turn around and walk away if someone said that to me. Like, okay, congrats, man. I was just going to go, mom, like, I don't know. I think there's like such a yeah. proper way to do it. But like, either way with well, Kodama, like with video, with showing it in person, it, like, dumb it down. Make it, yeah. show people like what it is. Like, they don't know what a borders balance is. Like, they know what a cup and a ball is. Like, start there. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know it, I mean? it, it, in some regards, it's like, if, if, so I, my background's business and marketing as well. And I think one of the things that I've, I've begun to see in a grander scope is the funnel that is Kendama. Like if you really want people to get to the place where they appreciate a border balance flip or a, or a triple, you know, tap or whatever that is, you actually have to start them off in a wider funnel, catch them with the big net, catch them with yeah. the big cup to spike, catch them with the around the world, whatever it is, show them a string trick to mesmerize them. Just right, spin like it around your finger once. What we do is really hard. Playing Kendama is really hard. And then once you play it at a scale of like what everyone, it's really hard. So like- Yeah, it's not like, an easy it's game. It's so okay to like just play simplistically. And like, that's where honestly I think that like my strength, strengths pull through. Cause I was just, I'd play simplistically, make it a little steezy, make yeah. sure it looks cool. And it's like, boom, there we go. Um, it's kind of just been like the, the recipe I've been running with that's been working. Yeah. Okay, I want to poke into this a little bit more and ask a question that I think is a really interesting question to dwell on. And maybe you haven't thought of it, but but what is a gap in the Kendama market right now? We have these these cool avenues that are developing through characters like Reed Stark or Boo Johnson into the X Games culture of the world, as well as we have this access into the EDM market through Boogie T and through Subtronics, Disciple, these these routes, we have some some gateways into the artist community through clouds with like Jody Barton or with uh, Cater, you know, all these all these different people. There's right. a lot of really good work happening. What are some other areas that are kind of just vacant and ready for someone to step into and say, hey, we can make something happen? That's actually a really, really good question. Because truthfully, again, I think that goes back to like what I was saying about just like how you show someone what Kendama is. Like, obviously, a lot of these people are getting endorsements like Boogie T, Boo, Jody, it's because they're talented in these certain things. And then they're also popular within these certain markets. And I think like, specifically with like Boo and Reed, like I was lucky enough to go to like Latvia last year with like D Westy. And the whole reason that Kendama USA sent us out there is because I think like Reed had gone out there a year or two prior on a BMX trip and had a Kendama with them or like sweets with them or I forget exactly how the story went, but like the whole reason we were there is because Reed was there. And then we got to Latvia. And when we got, so I'm just gonna tell the story real quick. It, it'll, it'll translate, I promise. Dylan and I walk into this giant event. There's news there. It's crazy. Like there's literally kids packed into this giant mall. Like it's crazy. Like if you, I'm not exaggerating. If you remember seeing like Viva La Bam or like Jackass when they went to the Mall of America and there was like kids everywhere and it was packed in security and like cameras, that's exactly how it was because Kendama was on fire in Latvia. They knew Sweets was the best. That's really all they knew at the time. Dylan and I came in. They were just, we were like, yo, what's up? It's Kendama USA. We're here to blah, blah, blah. Blow your minds. And no kid knew who we even were. They never heard of Kendama USA. They mm -hmm. never heard of USD. And then once we got into like smaller groups of kids, like no one knew who Nick Sog was. No one's heard of Soul Kendamas at all, but they all knew who Reed Stark was and they all knew what a Kendama was and they knew what Sweets was. So that was a really cool learning experience because I was like, damn, we work and play and focus on these players every single day, but none of them are even the ones that like pop, poked through the bubble of lobby. It was Reed, yeah. like these, these people are there like Reed and Boogie and like they have such a this this past year or two i would even say is like dedicated to those guys just like getting it so popular and like 
the reason I started filming Kendama is because like I filmed skateboarding. Like I come from a humongous skateboarding background and that kind of stuff. And it's like other kids out there exist just like we do. And they just don't know what Kendama is. So like, I think that like the market that kind of needed, because also I'm going to be going all over the place. It was yeah. taboo. It was kind of like weird. Like, okay, why are these guys getting like mods? Don't you get mods if you're like really good at Kendama? Like, these yeah. Guys can't even play that. But you know what I mean? Like, they painted a different picture. Like, a mod isn't based on skill, it's based it on the it, it, was, it was a weird, weird feeling because it was just like, I thought you have to win Cup to get this, or I thought you have to win Catch and Flow to get mm -hmm. a pro. It's like, no offense, Boo, Boo can't play Kendama that well. It's like, how does he get a mod? It's like, when you look at the numbers and when you see the growth after the fact, it's like, oh, holy crap. Like, now everybody knows what this is and it's like and, and truthfully to me it's like when you see like a baseball bat or a hockey stick you see a baseball bat or a hockey stick you don't see like a certain brand or like a name yeah. like if i see a kid like if someone sees a kid playing in kendama they see a kendama they have no idea that it's a jake fisher chrome pro mod slay dog like they just see a kendama and they have yeah. that translation where it's like oh uh, my cousin has that we have that and it's like there's something like connection so like I think in there also I may have answered, but like with the untapped market, definitely we, we're still in the early stages. Austin Donovan said it a long time ago. We're still in like the really, really baby stages of Kendama. Yeah, it's growing it's now. Big. It's growing, it's growing a lot faster right now, but it's growing because of the people that are getting into it. And I think the best way to keep them interested is just make sure they play and just make sure that they're just like, just liking it and make sure they understand it and just like the whole culture and community. Cause like nothing even, nothing feels whacker when you're just like, someone's mm -hmm. playing, but you know, they're not into Kendama. They're into it just for some other reason. Like it's, I don't know. Okay. I got, I got I have two questions here that I, one of them that I, I think is going to be a really fun question for you to answer. Uh, and then another one after that to, to kind of follow up and mm -hmm. then we'll jump into some live Q and A's here. Uh, the one question I want to ask is if you had the privilege to be able to create a collab mod with any creator influencer in the world, uh, who would you want to give a mod to like a, per like, like a Boo Johnson like, mod or like a Reed wait, Stark like, mod? like a person or like, it would be like with a brand. Either or what well, you choose. Supreme. 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 A Supreme I, Kendama. I think it would just look so sick. I think it would be so sick if there was just, cause I mean like Kendama, like Supreme, I like the I like Supreme as a brand, and I think that like all their stuff looks sick. And I think that like people take it a certain way. If you wear Supreme now, it's like tacky because people wear it. But at the same time, if you like something, you're gonna like it, and then mm -hmm. that, that's it. I think that like Supreme collab would be huge because it would really tap into like the underground like hype beast market, and I think they would realize and recognize like, oh wow, this is something that people actually like, and this is something that's like a little bit coveted. Like, yeah, Supreme will collab with like plastic bags and like bicycles and like ceramic companies but also i think i think it would be cool i think it would look very clean i would do like just a natty kendama no paint i wouldn't even have a bearing in there i'd have a bead i would have it like super super fundamental and i would just have like the little supreme box logo on the slip stop or tama or mm -hmm. something like that i think that would be really cool because like skateboarders bmx riders or bladers like that is like, that is like our demographic that that's the those are our kinds of people. So I just think that like that would be really cool and influencing and it would be, it would make sense. And it wouldn't be some type of like force weird thing. I think it would be like, oh, dang. Yeah, it would be sick. I, I think that's a huge collab opportunity there. That could be a lot of fun. Just waiting to see which company pulls it you off know, first. How many emails do you think I've sent Supreme with the proposal? <laughs> a wild at, guess. <laughs> at least 27. 28. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, um, one last question here, and then let's jump into some live Q and A. Uh, the last question I want to ask is on the media side of Kendama. Look at that Supreme pen. On the media Thank side you. of Kendama, uh, what is a gap that you want to see uh, filled on media? So we're we're beginning to see some cool content streams coming out of Kendama. One, I think, being some of this podcast culture that I sort of rode the wave on. On Brewview, we have the Bevel's Advocate. We got a Georgia podcast. We got the Dominards, obviously. Uh, outside of that, though, there's lots of like video content, of edits, and stuff like that. But what's a, a media stream that you're not seeing utilized very well right now? Hmm, that's a really good question. Um, I feel like a lot of people are gonna say like edits. You need edits for YouTube, and like I was one of those people that were like edits on YouTube, but like. 
you people put so much time and effort just like thought and energy into which like if you're gonna do that and make a giant video i've been there done that did it for a living like there's so many different media outlets for like content nowadays, like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. YouTube videos in the past used to get like hundreds of thousands of like views. But now if you upload a video, a good amount would be like 15,000. Yeah, like, yeah, it's changed it. a lot. Because it uploads to Instagram, it uploads to YouTube. Some people just see the little piece of it and they're like, that's good for me. They'll never watch the video. Like I think that Honestly, I think a lot of like Instagram, I think of a lot of like platforms are the best. Instagram's the best right now. I wish there was a way of like categorizing it so you don't have to like specifically scroll all the time. I think that like they're doing better with um, not IGTV, but I like how it's like categorized. With IGTV, there's like subsections you can go through and stuff, but. Yeah, do you, I mean, maybe a little Instagram question for you at being a social media guy. What do you think of Reels, Instagram Reels as an avenue for growing Kendama? Does it does it ruin Kendama or does it make it better? No, because honestly, it gives some of those like we're in a different phase. Like I've been playing Kendama for like ten years, and we're in a much different phase than what we were like a long time ago. And sometimes, like doing something on TikTok or doing something on a reel, like that will translate with somebody. Like yes, it sometimes looks tacky, and like the majority of the stuff on TikTok is cringy and stupid. But like I really don't like when people are just like TikTok stupid because of these reasons. The reels are dumb. Mm -hmm. Like it's in my feed now, and it's like yeah, but. There's still like that's like saying Instagram is stupid because you saw somebody post like a crappy picture. It's like Instagram's dumb. No one even knows what they're doing. It's like yeah. it's not one picture. Like actually curate your feed and look. Like I spend most of my time, if not days, on Instagram. So like I, I always challenge that when someone's like, Oh, it's stupid. Yeah. I'm just like, Well, yes. The videos of like kids in crop tops doing like voiceovers and dances, that is silly to me. However, <laughs> if you dig deeper, like there's funny stuff on there. My girlfriend and I, before the interview, we were literally laying in bed, like watching TikToks, like laughing. So, like, yes, it is stupid. Like, but at the same time, but, like, ain't it to be stupid? Like, you yeah, put but, but it's, in, a, like, it's a market space that we could use and, and reach into. And we've seen massive success there. Like, I know that, um, like, Soul Kandamas, for one, and Isaac Kandama, like Isaac, who runs Lotus, have both uploaded reels, or not reels, TikToks that have reached like millions of people. And that's a million eyes that are now seeing this game that we all love and play. Uh, and that's a million potential people that might say, hey. And that's all it is. The viewer has no idea who Isaac is. The viewer has no idea that's Lotus. They, the viewer just knows, okay, that was pretty now, cool. Like, they know what that thing is now. And it's yeah. like, at least we started somewhere. So like, yeah, I think it's just like, I think overall with like Kendama and like media right now, I think you, it'd be cool for to see people just like take it um, just a little more like next level, just like polish the stuff, make videos, like put thought into mm -hmm. what you're doing because like you're investing in yourself. Like Kendama is something that we're all obsessed with. Like, and you're in, like, and the bigger it gets, the bigger the opportunities are, the more travel options, bigger competitions, like Sweets and I, and like we used to have meetings about like uh, X Games with like Kendama and stuff like that. And like, that's possible. And I think it's possible with like all of us playing, like think about a Kendama team. Like the team is essentially the people doing the advertisements for the Kendama company. Any agreement with any Kendama company is gonna be this. You're really good at Kendama. I'm gonna give you these Kendamas for free. And in return, you're going to tag our company, make cool content and, and people are gonna buy Kendamas and then it's gonna give us more money so we can do more things like essentially. That that's like, yeah. that's the fundamentals of an agreement when it's a sponsorship. Here's free Kendamas, make videos, give it back to us. I think a lot of players aren't doing the giving back when it comes to like content. A lot of people yeah. are getting Kendamas, but a lot of people aren't making content with it. And it's right. not hard. This isn't a dig at people that like, don't make content. Like, this is just like, do it. Tag yeah. somebody. Put a little bit of thought into what you're doing. And it, I swear, it will make it look that much better. Like, I'm a good Kendama player, but I'm not a fantastic Kendama player. And I feel that I've excelled pretty far with my mediocre skill and good eye for like film and like camera and stuff. Like I'm proof of it. Like I had this thought, I had this theory. I was like, Hmm, I can play like this, make it like this and get here. And I did. So like, I'm telling you that is what the recipe is. Like, just like put a little bit of thought into it. Cause when someone buys a Kendama, that like you did that, that affects the company that affects your sponsorship that affects like everything. So just like, I think that if like we as the Kendama community look at ourselves as like the spokesperson for Kendama, it'll make everything better. So just mm -hmm. like, but also if you're not good at film, like that's fine too. Take, take a picture, do something, talk about it. Like, but somehow like, somehow contribute to it. To yeah. You know what I mean? Give that back. Sense.
totally. Okay. We got like five minutes left before Instagram kicks us off and I know you got to go. So let's try and hit like a couple real quick fire questions here to wrap up the Ooh. episode. First off, let me say a huge thank you for jumping on the review. This has been really helpful for me and yeah, seeing man. my contribution to the community. And I think for those listening and tuning in live as well, uh, this is a great opportunity for us to be reminded that Kendama is a bigger picture. And uh, if we want to see the game that we love get into the hands of more people, uh, we need to think about it in a bigger way. We need to see that Kendama can reach other audiences, but we get to play a part in that. And so uh, let's jump into a few last questions, but ultimately let me say thank you, Brian. Thank you. It was very, very, very fun. Fortunate to have been here. Okay, awesome. Uh, Haley Bischoff asked, favorite Kendama edit and why? Maybe one that is just most aesthetically appealing. It's easy. Uh, Grain Theory VHS Workout Japan Tour video, I think is the name. But basically, Jake Weens is a psychopath, and he flew the entire team out to Japan, filmed the video with a camera, uploaded it to his computer, edited it, exported it onto a v VCR with a VHS tape, and then uploaded the VHS tape back onto the computer. So the video you're watching is that grainy, gritty, like just old skate tape vibe. It gave, it's the best Konama aesthetic video, everything. Also, um, Bonds' Pro video is sick. Good Grief is very, very sick. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this, this, that's one of the episodes. I could dissect Konama edits, but the GT oh, yeah. uh, VHS Japan tour. Is good. There's, yeah, anything GT puts out content wise is so good. Okay, question from here from our friend Dan Robinson. Dan Rowe, Rowe. Uh, as we enter a new era of Kendama, what would you like to see change and what would you like to see stay the same? Maybe one thing you want to see change and one thing you want to see stay the same. I just want to see people put more thought and effort into like themselves. Like, again, not everybody's going to be like this promoter. Like, no one's going to flip that switch immediately. But like, I want you to think like when you get this product from that company, they're relying on you to land cool tricks, but also make it translatable so other people can buy them and it helps find the company. And that's just the general agreement with anything when it comes to sponsoring. So just put some thought into what you're doing, land your trick, like make the content, like just but put some thought into it because it's going to benefit you, the company, literally all of us and everybody. So that's one thing I want to see like change if people kind of just. And what do you want to see stay the same? Um, Stay the same. I like how everyone's kind of a stickler though. Like if the Kendama touches your finger, like, yeah, do it again. If it doesn't look clean, do it again. If you do a cloud bounce and you catch it like this, and keep going out of it, the spike, like, do yes, it again. that was hard, but like, oh, do it again. Like, I like how there's still sticklers in the Kendama community. Like, no hate, obviously, but like, yeah. I like the stickler stubbornness, like, nah, do it again. It's classic. Cool. Okay, um, maybe the last question here from Eric Berto, Lugo Martinez, a very, very long name, and I hope I said that okay. Skaggs, what are your main, what's your main Kendama you sesh with? Bro, I love Slay dogs. Slay dogs are just so chunky and fat and like so good. Yes. I got yes. my classic slay dog. Oh my goodness. This is a uh... plus like black hole just gets like crazy. Oh yeah. So yeah, this is yeah, I gotta pick one of those up here soon. I, I wanna try out some of the new Chrome stuff. I haven't played much of it recently, so but a lot of my also, friends out I here. I love the new Jody Barton mod, so definitely after the interview, check those out on Chromenob.com. Yeah. Shameless plug. Yeah, shameless plug, plug away. We got three minutes here to, to wrap up. So let me say this, Brian. Thank you again for joining the review. Those of you tuning in, uh, if you don't follow Brian, uh, I don't know why you wouldn't be. He is continually progressing Kendama into a new way, uh, into to showcasing Kendama as more than just a ball in a cup. And that is what I most appreciate about the work that you've done in the Kendama community, is that you've made it accessible for other people outside to see that Kendama is attractive and it's playable and it's fun. And so really appreciate the work you've done in the Kendama community and the work that you continue to do. And I'm really excited to see what you are able to do with Chrome Kendama in the future. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say with the last 30 seconds here? And then I just want to plug who's on next week. Um, no, that's it. Thank you very much for having me. This has been so much fun. Uh, I'm all hyped up on coffee now. Um, that's my life. Adam, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much for this. Love all of you guys. Weens, everyone in the comments. I'm saving this video. I'm going to go back and look at these comments. I love yeah, you guys it'll so be, much. This will be uploaded on IGTV afterwards, and it'll be uploaded no. to the podcasting platforms that you all listen to. Apple, Spotify, you name it. So you can definitely listen to this afterwards. And a few ways to really help get this conversation out there is by sharing the IGTV. 
uh, liking, commenting, reviewing the podcast on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, that really helps to grow the Kenoma community. Um, so lastly, let me say this. Next week, I'm also very excited for another episode of The Preview, but it's going to be a little different. We're not doing it on Saturday. We're going to be doing it on Monday morning because next week we're hosting an event here in Calgary, Brew Battle 2020, a live in-person Kendama competition, and I'm beyond stoked. And so next Monday, following the competition, I got Rodney Ansel joining me here in the Brewview studio, interviewing MJ, and we're doing a Dama Nerds and Brewview collab episode. So I really hope to see you guys there next week as we talk about podcast culture in Kendama. Got to get the photo. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I hope everybody enjoyed this episode. I know there were so many questions left unanswered. So go ahead and shoot me a DM. Go ahead and shoot Brian a DM and engage yeah, with us. Sure. And we will see you next week. And stay caffeinated, everybody. Much Thanks love. so much, Brian. Peace.